This is the ThinkPad Z13 Gen 2, and I think it's one of the strongest MacBook killers I've ever seen. It's modern, it's minimal, and it's built really well. It also runs Linux very nicely. So join me as we take a look at this 13-inch laptop that I've been using every day for around a month now. Okay, so when I talk about a MacBook killer, what does that mean? Well, modern MacBooks are well known for having a fantastic build quality, beautiful design, a good display, great performance, and a long battery life, just to name a few. So we'll use this criteria to look at the Z13. The build quality is really good. The use of higher quality materials with good internal engineering makes this device feel sturdy and solid. There's zero flex in the body, with only a tiny bit in the display. It feels great to hold, and while it only comes in at around 1.2 kilograms, it feels like the right weight. It's not so light that it feels cheap, but it's not heavy. Design can be subjective, but I really like this one. I find it to be classy, grown up, and minimal. I love the ThinkPad logos on the top of the case and on the palm rest. The Z13 engraving is a nice touch, but I'm not so keen on the Lenovo branding on the side of the case. It feels like the ThinkPad and the Z13 logo were enough. This laptop is really nice to interact with. A lot of ThinkPad purists who prefer the traditional designs might hate this keyboard, but I've done a lot of typing on this machine and it's perfectly comfortable. Horror stories of this trackpad are also unfounded. It took me exactly 10 seconds to get used to using it, and it's perfectly fine and accurate. The pointing nipple is also included in this model, with the left and right mouse buttons living at the top of the trackpad. As you can see, I'm not very accurate with it, I haven't had much practice, but let me know in the comments if any of you use the nipple daily, <laughs> I'd be interested to know. The display is fantastic. The 1920 by 1200 panel goes up to around 400 nits of brightness, which looks great. I've dialed it up to 100% for the video, but my camera really doesn't do it justice. It's also a low power IPS display, which is great for saving battery. You can configure this machine to have a higher refresh OLED display, but I passed on that because I don't need any more than 60Hz on a laptop and it uses more power. The port situation is where we get a bit stuck. On the left we have a USB-C slash charging port, and that's it. On the right we have another USB-C port, the power button, and a line in and out jack. Yep, the port selection is a bit dire, but it's a compromise I was willing to make. The USB ports are also USB 4, which softens the blow a little bit. Overall, I think the build and design of this machine is very comparable to a MacBook. Of course, design is subjective, but I'll give it a pass for this category. So, we've looked at the physical properties of the Z13, but what about the specs? This machine features a Ryzen 7 Pro 7840U. 16GB of RAM, a 512GB SSD, and a Radeon 780M. I'm really impressed with the performance that this compact little device provides. It feels snappy, and running a Geekbench 6 CPU test confirms this suspicion, which placed the machine ahead of Apple's M2 chip. As for the GPU, I ran the absolutely gorgeous 2017 Superposition benchmark at 1080p with medium settings, and I was really surprised to see a score of 4914. This puts the graphics performance of the integrated Radeon 780M roughly equivalent to a GTX 960. I wasn't looking for any graphics grunt in my new laptop, but the 780M will allow me to edit standard 1080p video in DaVinci Resolve, and it also delivers strong performance in light games. So, performance definitely gets a pass here. It's very, very strong. What about battery life? We all know that modern Apple Silicon MacBooks are famed for their long-lasting batteries, so how does this one shape up? It's actually a bit difficult to quantify. I use the PowerTop utility in Linux to measure battery usage live. While idle and in power save mode, the machine sips around 3 watts. I've even seen it go as low as 2.04 watts. But the second you start to do anything like web browsing or word processing, power usage shoots up to between 5 and 6 watts. This isn't bad by any means, but it's also really difficult to give a solid number. PowerTop often reports battery life for over 11 hours, but in real world usage, I don't think you'd hit that unless you're literally just browsing one tab of a text-based website or word processing. 
While power management of the efficient Ryzen 7 Pro with the power profiles daemon in Fedora is very good, I don't think the Z13 can match a modern MacBook for battery life. It's not bad at all, and I don't think you'd get less than, say, 5 or 6 hours under a normal load, but that also depends what normal is for you. I guess I'd have to give the Z13 a fail in this category. I've been very happy with the battery life so far, it's just not as long lasting as a MacBook. Of course, MacBooks run macOS, so if you absolutely need to run macOS, this won't be for you, and it definitely won't be your MacBook killer. But for me, running Linux on this laptop, it has been. I'm really happy with how well put together it feels, and the performance is absolutely fantastic. It was also a no-brainer cost-wise, with 16GB of RAM, a 512GB SSD, configuring the M3 MacBook Air to this spec was over 600 Australian dollars more at the time of making this video. And if you've been watching this channel already, you'll know that I'm on a Linux journey. Every machine I use daily now uses Linux as its sole OS, and support for Fedora on this laptop is great. So that's been a look at the ThinkPad Z13 Gen 2. I hope you found it interesting, and I'd be keen to hear what you think about this laptop as a competitor to the MacBooks. If you're interested in videos like this, and also some other Linux content, why not like and subscribe? Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.